Okay, boys and girls, it's the same back time, same back channel. The moment you've been waiting for. The latest Israel update. The very first one of the month of January 2021. Yes, that bad year. Boo. 2020 is gone. Hi, Mike. How are you? You know, besides having a Leonard Skinner t-shirt on, yeah, I, I know, Mr. Simple Man. Yeah. Um, you know, you're, you, you, I have always introduced you as, as a person who is a legend in your own mind, but the truth is that you're probably becoming a legend in more than just your mind. It's probably in other people. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, I think well, you think it is. You think? <laughs> All right. Well, as we say in Hebrew, oh, bless their hearts. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, Hanok, uh, I, I don't know what kind of craziness really is going on in Israel, but uh, this is going to be possibly um, a, a history-making day in America. Okay. And uh, we're not going to go right. into the, a lot of the politics. I might get into some of those weeds with Barry here in just a little while. But uh, how close do you see what is happening? Okay, we're in, in the United States. We have this, uh, you know, the devil went down to Georgia and, and got enough votes, um, to quote Charlie Daniels. Uh, we have um, elections in Israel coming up. Um, we have a, a day in which the Congress of the United States is, who knows what's going to happen uh, in that. All of these things that are, are happening in the world today. And then you look at the Torah portion that we just, you know, just happened to be in the beginning Torah portion of, uh, of Exodus or Shemot. And it's about a Pharaoh who rose to power that did not acknowledge Yosef or did not acknowledge the, the, what, had, what Joseph had done for Egypt. I, I mean, right. you know, I, I think this is kind of a, not just a softball, but maybe a, more of a T-ball question. Do you see any similarities here? Similarities between the Torah portion and the world? Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. The, what that points to um, in the Parshiot of Shemot is something that, you know, I really wanted to get into today um, in, a, in a slightly different direction of, you know, what it meant for the children of Israel who seems to seem to have changed their view of themselves, but for sure, for sure, because here it is, the world is different. You've made references to, to the divided states of America. And, you know, in Israel, we have enormous political differences. But even with our 26 plus political parties that will be running, nothing compared to what's going on in America. Oh, no. I mean, if today, uh, God forbid, a, a missile was lobbed into, uh, you know, an area of Israel, those 26 parties, for the most part, become, uh, I mean, there would be some factions in, within there because of Palestinian influence, various things. But for the most part, the Israeli people would come together as one. Yeah. Um, I, I think you could probably do the same missile in the middle of America somewhere, and America would still be divided. Yeah, what would happen is 50% of the country approximately would mourn, mm -hmm. and 50% of the country approximately would celebrate. Yeah. What does that mean for our listeners? What it means is y'all got to stop being distracted. If you count on the latest political iteration anywhere in Israel or America or the UN or the EU or any of the other alphabet soup, you know, World Health Organization, whoever else, yeah. CDC, you know, 
I feel like I'm on Sesame Street now with all my, you know, with my initials and spelling <laughs> or Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Yeah. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? No. You're missing the point. It is Hashem and Hashem only that provides direction. Hashem and Hashem only that will save us. I, you know, I, I've given you some predictions on Israel's elections, both when it would happen and the fact that it's likely to not be decisive. I will give you a prediction today on what's going to happen in Washington. Politically, I'm talking about. I'm not talking about in the streets. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Those of you who are counting on, counting upon, excuse me, Ted Cruz or anyone else to come and save the day or Mike Pence ain't going to happen. Brothers and sisters ain't going to happen. You're betting on the wrong horse. But, but hello, even if it, even if you're wrong in that, okay. And that something did happen with Cruz or Pence or something like that. In the end, I would still say that you were right. Yeah. Because it, you know, it's the same sheriff in town pretty much. You, you cannot, exactly. you cannot, uh, I mean, to use this statement over and over again, you cannot solve a spiritual problem with a political solution. Now, Absolutely. okay, everyone, pretty much everyone listening to me, to you and I today would say, okay, I got that, Hanok. Okay, I, I, I'm trusting in Hashem. You know, I don't trust in the political parties or so, but is, is that more of a statement than a lifestyle? It's a statement for sure, and definitely not a lifestyle. Okay. And because so, I've seen, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I've seen people essentially be paralyzed. Mm -hmm. They're sitting and waiting. They were sitting and waiting while other people were ahead of, of them online at Costco, buying up 36,000 rolls of toilet paper. Okay, America will be able to clean itself up for a very long period of time for those rolls with those rolls of toilet paper. That's one element. The other element is people like, oh my God, did you hear? They're 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 taking away our coins. They're forcing. It. Well, you know what? It's like the guy who sent around the video that America was going to be burning in November and December. You know, I mean, I know people that at the time we still thought that people could come to Israel on our tour at the time. People said, no, 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 no. I'm canceling because this is going to happen. Every, you know, it's, it's the catastrophe of the day. And we come back to what you said moments ago, a spiritual problem. Mm -hmm. And that's our transition. That's our segue to the Parsha. Okay. okay. Not only were the children of Israel turned into slaves, they themselves began thinking of themselves as slaves. And the ramifications of that to this very day still exist hmm. within the Jewish community and within all who identify as part and parcel of the children of Israel, the Jewish and the Ephraimite sides. Okay. It's still that sense of people being like, you know, you and I have spoken about how people say, you know, I, I would love to go to Israel, of course, you know, when conditions are better um, health wise, globally. Um, but, you know, I'm waiting for the Lord mm -hmm. to provide the income. The, the idea that the Lord is waiting upon them to generate the income, to have a yard sale, to take a second job, to perhaps cut down on eating out and whining and dining and questioning whether they need a new car every two years and taking those funds towards trips to Israel, towards supporting institutions in Israel, to being part, to put, to make sure that they have skin in the game. Well, you know, because right I mean, now they kind of a strange, 
you know place to go to but the the people the the you know the hebrews that were in egypt had pretty much forgotten who they were so their their lack of identity caused them to be able to their their identity had been changed from they began to think like slaves and yes Okay. And I mean, we've seen slavery all over the world. Uh, how, how does one person break free so fast? Because though they were titled a slave, they never became a slave in their mind. And so the, the Hebrews exactly. in Egypt, they were thinking like slaves. When it, was come, when it was time for them to be freed from Egypt, they left with slavery mentality. And that slavery mentality is what caused them to die off in the wilderness. They never saw themselves yeah. in Canaan. They had never saw themselves returning to the land. So I think there's there are a lot of similarities today. You know, you talk about uh, in this time that there would be people, you know, that not just, not just, uh, you know, so, well, I just, I just can never see myself as going to Israel, and so why bother? But during this whole year, have not, have not reached out to, uh, to find ways that maybe they could send some of their funds to Israel to help out. Now, I'm not just, I'm not just speaking about sending to Hanok. Okay, there are all kinds of different areas, places in Israel, that we continue to give to that are that are hurting i mean terrible very much um you know it, it's being connected with your destination and a slave does not have a connection to a destination now yeah that that may the, be more profound the, than what i thought it's it's incredibly profound because for the slave it's getting through that day. There is mm -hmm. no expectation that tomorrow or the day after or the week after or the month after or the year after will be any different. There is no expectation. And it is a level of living lowered to its lowest common denominator, mm -hmm. simply surviving. And, you know, I don't want to scoop us ahead a few weeks, but these were the same children of Israel who, you know, complained to Moshe of, you know, like, why could, can't we go back to, to Egypt, yeah. to Mitzrayim? I mean, we had it good. We had garlic. We had leeks. They may have even had Cajun blackened seasoning, for all I know. Rabbinic sources tell us that four-fifths, 80%, mm -hmm of the children of Israel did not choose to leave when the time came. That's a staggering statistic. And, you know, is it because they just saw themselves as Egyptians? Uh, it, was, it, was, it was not, a, not as Egyptians because they weren't citizens, but it was they they knew that their whatever bowl of whatever the next day of gruel or whatever w was there and all they had to do was make bricks all day mm -hmm. it was it was quote unquote like a guaranteed living not so, much of a living certainly yeah. not a life if you've ever you know anyone that's ever studied slaves anyone that's in slavery you can see a person that is in slavery by their the, by the position of where they look. A slave will normally look down. Yeah. A person that has never, uh, has never gotten that slave mentality will continue to look toward the horizon. Yeah. You know, and that's, they, they quit looking. At somewhere within their generations, they quit looking toward the horizon of where Canaan was. And just as uh, very similar to Lot, you know, maybe when they moved into Goshen, they set up their tents or built their houses or whatever with the door facing to Canaan. And somewhere along the way, they kind of started to shift that door 
to where it, it was pointing more toward the capital of Egypt. Um, yeah. The, the whole shift. And it happened very much like the frog in the boiling water, didn't it? Yeah. So subtly that no one even noticed it was happening until yeah. it was too late. Yeah. Um, and and the, I mean, these, these analogies of creation are, are a lot of fun to me. You know, it, it is, I mean, it's, you put a, a frog in, in water and turn the heat up, it'll just sit there until it boils. And, you know, I mean, they're, they're not kosher, so you can't actually eat the frog legs anymore, which I never really, I never really thought about that. If I, I figured, somebody told me it's, it tasted like chicken, so I just went ahead and had chicken. It, yeah. Um, you know, I just, something about that didn't, didn't appeal to me. But the other one is the, the, the crab mentality. Now, you've probably never been on the bayou uh, catching crabs, have you? No, can't say that I have, Mike. Okay, well, you know, I have. <laughs> and uh, you take a, you take a, a piece of uh, a, a chicken leg, okay? I guess that's why everything tastes like chicken, because you bait it with it. So you take a chicken leg, put it on a string, and you throw it out there into the water. Well, the crab will grab it. You start pulling it in. The crab will hang on to that thing all the way up there onto the, onto the bank, and you throw him in a five-gallon bucket. Well, as that bucket gets higher and higher, there's the ability, the crabs on the top can actually reach up with a claw and grab over and push themselves, pull themselves out of the bucket and go back to the water to freedom. But it's an amazing thing to watch, you know, that the crabs that are in the bucket below them will reach up and grab that crab and pull it back down. Wow. Yeah. It's incredible. I mean, that's what slaves do. That is the slave mentality of how dare you want to be out of this. So when Moshe came into back into the land, it wasn't, I mean, convincing Pharaoh was actually the easier part of the job. It was convincing the other crabs that were in Egypt that we really need to leave this place. We need to leave this five gallon bucket because our this, this bucket is our exile. And yeah. so instead of thinking about this bucket as exile, they started thinking about it as home. Wow, you know, I, I, I really hope when people are, are listening to this, all of our beloved friends, brothers and sisters, that they're, they're, they're pausing this for a second and thinking about it and then going back. And, you know, I, I don't know if people realize that we don't do this to keep them entertained. Although that in and of itself might be fun. It's, it's a sense of sharing what we're going through in our personal and collective struggles to stay focused, to stay on top, to stay really with, with, with our eyes on Hashem and his direction of the world. And we've got to be using this time to prepare for those next steps. Ready or not, here it comes. Yeah, and so uh, just with the as as the Hebrews in uh, in Egypt, you know, there came a time in which the plagues. You know, at first the plagues were affecting everyone, and then the 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 plagues only affected the Egyptians, and did not affect those that were in Goshen. Yeah, you know, it, it's my favorite plague is the darkness. The, the, there was total darkness all over Egypt, but there was a light out there in Goshen that you could see over the horizon. But here's an interesting thought for you uh, to, to consider, Hanok. Were there Hebrews that had left Goshen and assimilated themselves into Egypt, and therefore that same plague of darkness affected them? That's an interesting question. I'm sure that many would have loved to 
have become part of Egyptian society, but you know, they were still, you know, so physically they weren't able to, but mentally and spiritually they were. Okay, so let's take it to another level here. Could they have been living in the light of Goshen, but living in their own darkness? Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And we live in a world today that has, based on the potential for information sharing, has the potential for more light, using that analogy, than at any time ever in history. But more and more people have enveloped themselves in darkness of their own creation. There's a lot of prayers in America lately that that which has been done in darkness would be revealed by the light. The light would be shown on things. Um, so, you know, back to that, I, I just my, my brain's kind of going there a lot right now. Of the, There are people that are, as, as the, the Almighty is desiring to shed his light, the light of a coming kingdom, possibly, upon this earth, that they are so focused on the latest talk show, the latest podcast, the latest dream and vision, the latest yada yada, that in the midst of the Almighty shedding his light, they will remain in darkness and never see it. Yeah, I mean, I had a little personal experience with that just yesterday. Um, yesterday, the 5th of January was exactly to the day, 10 months since I was last able to work. Last time I guided was March the 5th. So in a moment of, I don't know, disgust and self-pity, I posted on Facebook that it's been 10 months since I was last able to work. Some of the comments were the most bizarre, ridiculous. Well, I've heard rumors here and we in the Hebrew roots community feel that blah, blah, blah. And like, hello, you know, you want to tap on people's heads and say, stop, you know, sitting around a cauldron, you know, stirring it up to see what brew you can come up with. Sometimes if it walks like a duck, and quacks like a duck, it very well might be a duck. It might be. And, and I mean, I saw your post there, uh, and I, I have not gone to all the responses. I got kind of confused and bewildered and a little angry at the first ones. But uh, some of the first ones, I won't put any, any specific one. But I mean, you know, you were just kind of laying something to me. Okay, maybe, maybe you have some great ulterior motive. I, I don't know. But yeah. To me, no. you were just kind of laying out something of your of what you were thinking, of what your struggle is, and for, yeah. for people to just take it to conspiracies instead of saying, "Hey, Hanok, I mean, at least I, you know I'm praying for you. You know, be encouraged. I mean, I mean something. You know, as social media and, and here, think so. yeah, you know, I, I go back to this that slaves go through life with their head down." Let, let me let me um, let me illustrate that. <laughs> okay, that's perfect. So um, I can tell you, you know, back in, I'm sorry. This this takes this takes the personal. You know, a lot of what we do online like this, and we talk you know, numerous times, a lot of times, numerous times during the week, is just continuing to keep things personal. Um, I want to, I want to know what's going on in your life. You know, you, you call me and ask me about my, about my the grandchildren and, you know, how's the dog doing, you know, but has, has this social media, when people see a post, they just react to the post and never thinking about the person that has put up the post. It, 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 that's all true. And again, and it was just, it, it, there was no ulterior motive. It's just kind of like, wow, 
you know, it just hit me. It's exactly like today, January 6th is my brother's birthday. Wow. Yesterday, January 5th, 10 months since I last worked. Wow. That really, really stinks. The, the, the things that people write, let alone the things that I had to remove are so bizarre. And what it shows is that people really don't have a heart for each other, let alone for Hashem. Mm -hmm. So how is it that they can get messages like this and internalize them and do anything productive with it when they're still wrapped up in their in their own little heads? Yeah. I mean, so, people are still, you know, just crazy. Yeah, I mean, the, the typical response is, well, why don't you just go get another job? Uh, not understanding that that's not, you know, that the America, you know, you go down and you put in an application at McDonald's or something, no matter how old you are, you know, it, uh, yeah. it, it Ingalls, you know, our local grocery store, uh, it is as long as you're not, as long as you're not, a, not having to use a cane to walk, um, you know, you can, you can bag groceries or something, which was, you know, I mean, that's crazy to me in the first place. But Europe, and you guys are part of Europe, is a different, there, there's a different philosophy here uh, regarding this. I remember going to, to Belgium, and I met somebody that was in their 40s and had just gotten laid off from a career, and someone said, you know, well, well what are you going to do? He said, I don't know. At 45, in 40 years old or so in Europe, you don't start a new career because nobody hires you. It's pretty yeah. much, you know, you get laid off when you're in your, you know, 40s, 50s, it's pretty much a death sentence. You're going to live the rest of your life on whatever social uh, plan there is of your country. And that's a, a lot of, you know, it's, it's difficult in, uh, in, in Israel and various places in Europe. So, you know, this kind of a, a judgmental attitude is where I'm going with that instead of, and, and social media, well, how did we get here? Um, social media uh, gives birth to more of a judgmental attitude than an attitude of compassion. Without a doubt, there's very little that people do or say of even just like, hey, man, prayers are with you. Hey, hang in there. People don't do that as often as saying, well, did you realize that the governor of Michigan, much maligned, said this, this, who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Even, even in Michigan, they don't care about the governor of Michigan. Yeah. And maybe that's the call to all of us today. I mean, we, we, we started somewhere and we've gone, you know, we can't do rabbit trails because rabbits aren't kosher, but, uh, you know, maybe a bovine trail along the way, uh, or as you would call them cows, but, uh, you know, maybe that's where we need to go through Ooh. this as, <laughs> uh, that in the midst of all that's going on, it's, it's very easy to allow yourself to be driven by anger. And then somebody puts up a post on, on Facebook oh, yeah. and what is the response yeah. is out of that, out of that anger that you're dealing with inside, instead of saying, you know, this yeah. person is trying to share something that's going on in their life. Maybe if I showed some compassion, I'd, I'd find something different in my own self. Or yep. to quote Hanuk Young, maybe we ought to just keep on doing what we've been doing because it's been working out so well to begin with. <laughs> I, this is about as close as I get to speechless. That's really funny. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, we're out of time there, simple Anytime. man. So uh, you know, go go for your okay. little you know around the around your uh, uh, building. Can you walk around your building, or are you just Yes. Or you can find Actually, your chair. You, you, can, you can walk more than a kilometer for exercise, quote unquote, or to get a vaccine appointment or a doctor's appointment. Okay. Well, 
It's crazy. Yeah, put, put your earbuds on, a little free bird, sure and you'll be okay. All righty. Talk Take to care, you soon. Mike. Shalom. Bye-bye.